before you get started, and I'm just going to seal. Hello, all, all zero people who watch these videos. I love you. I love zero people. I've got a tremendous amount of shit in the bar right now. Just to make this one drink, I need an egg white, which means I'm gonna have leftover yolk, which means I'm gonna do bebop oyster. It's just legally required, so that's how we're gonna get started. I need my shaker, which does not contain ice. Gotta get my egg white a going. Oh, what a terrible break. Oof. Yolk, don't break on me. Okay, it broke. But I'm still going to drink. I didn't bring the ice either. So, for those of you who don't know, even though we've done one on the channel before, a bebop oyster is an egg yolk, gin, Tabasco, salt, pepper, whatever else you really like, but I'm just going to do salt and Tabasco. And actually, somebody switch out the Tabasco entirely for just Angostura. Oof, that's heavy Angostura. Right. <laughs> so much Tabasco, so much Angostura, so much gin. Ugh. Actually kind of a gross egg yolk. I have my soda stream bottle here for a reason. Okay. Cutting lemon and lime. I guess I should say at some point what I'm fucking making. Um, I'm gonna make a silver fizz, which is a slow gin drink. Now, slow gin is a gin made with slow berries. It's actually lower alcohol by volume. It's, it's kind of like the gin equivalent of, of a port or a brandy type drink. And it's actually goddamn delicious. I can't just sit here and drink neat slow gin. Uh, I was taking a, a row of shots down to a friend's place the other day and just brought three shots of slow gin. And I keep reminding myself that I gotta go get those shot glasses back. So, I'm gonna squeeze a lemon and a lime into my shaker. I wish you could see the tremendous amount of oils expressing into the air as I do this. So there's our lemon, absolute delight. And a lime. Talk amongst yourselves. Terrified my elbow's gonna hit the shelf back here. Truly a resilient lime. Now best of Then I need, obviously, duh, slow gin. Some recipes call for slow gin and gin, which I don't know. But just to recap, there's an egg white, a lemon, and a lime. And now an ounce. Slow gin in this bad boy. Let's try it without the regular gin. We can always add that in if need be. Now, when you're working with egg white, um, you want to give it a dry shake first. Start to emulsify that egg. 
Shaker does not always... No, yeah, you get a bit of a froth when you do that. That's why it kind of leaks out the side of the shaker. We've had, uh, you know, our share of accidents around here with things in the shaker. But yes, be very careful when you're shaking an egg white. It will froth. You want to gently shake it. I didn't bring over the ice, for I'm a simple man. You're gonna get us copyright stricken. Also, we should have got more ice when we were out yesterday. So for that, I'm gonna throw ice in the shaker. Give it another gentle shake. Throw it in our tallest glass. Slow gin, not for kitties. Coming out of the shaker, it's a lovely pink color. I think it actually is an okay looking drink. Might do well in martini glass. Yep, that's outside, buddy. That's where you don't go. Take a look at that. It's actually a really nice color. I think you could serve that to someone. You get that froth on top. I don't know if you want to drink it through the froth or with a straw. I don't know which is... You can talk. Everyone knows you're here. Seltzer? Oh, yeah. Adoy. Also, you're supposed to top it up with club soda or tonic water. <laughs> Herning. That's why I put it in such a tall glass. It's all coming back to me now. That's pretty good. It's like you can see that that is mostly it's foam that's kind of settling and rising now, but it actually looks really good. It looks it looks inherently refreshing, and the amount of citrus in there is going to make it so make it so. It is, it's really light, it's really refreshing. There's not a lot of substance to it, it's not complicated. Especially putting in as much club soda as I did, but... It would be a fantastic warm weather drink, that's for sure. Just the, with the amount of citrus alone. Um, I guess you don't want to be shaking egg whites every time you're making a drink out on the patio, though. I did see some similar recipes that don't necessarily require it. Wanna try it? Yeah. The thing is, <laughs> this is kind of all you can do with slow gin. No one has come up with uh, any, what I would consider, interesting recipes for it. It's just all fizzes all the time. It's kinda nice with the foam, actually. It is nice, yeah. I'm trying without the straw. Mm. And especially with just the slow gin in there, it's a uh, it's actually a really low alcohol by volume drink. Now, once you add in uh, a glass of club soda as well. Probably not even as strong as a beer. And if you were to throw in some gin, we're gonna have to finish off the old Tom gin today. Uh, I have this rule about when there's less than six ounces in a bottle, you gotta finish it. Not all in one drink, though. It's a teaser for what we're gonna do in the future. We're gonna try and work in this, uh, this macadamia liqueur into something. Yep, you can throw as much gin as you want in this. It's, it's still going to taste mostly like lemon and lime club soda with delicious, delicious slow gin, which we're also kind of running low on. Like, seriously, this is how much I, I love slow gin. There's this much left. And yeah, this is the first time making a cocktail. I think it would also be fun to to make a Manhattan with, uh, with slow gin in place of the vermouth. I've been experimenting with that all week. 
called it yesterday. Uh, I made a Manhattan with port. Actually, that was this morning. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> I made a Manhattan with port instead of vermouth, and it was just okay. It's not worth doing, but I am still trying to find a way to just exercise vermouth from our lives. Cut on this video. See you in the next one. Shut up.